To continue our discussion with debits and credits, we've spoken about the fact that we use debits and credits to indicate which side of the general ledger account we are going to post the transaction to. We know that for each element of the financial statement, they have their own debit and credit rule. Again, I gave you an infographic for that. We discussed that your assets, liability, equity, income and expenses may have different rules in terms of which side they increase or decrease on. And you have to make sure that you know that. We know that there's going to be more than one transaction that happens on a monthly basis. And naturally, this also means that there may be more than one type of transaction happening or one transaction happening repeatedly. We don't create new accounts every single time a transaction takes place. All we do is we use the same account. It makes sense. So let's take a look at a, an example. If I said to you, you spent or your business spent 600 Rand on petrol and you took the money from the bank account, from the business bank account. Oh, sorry, <laughs> change pages. And you took the money from the business bank account. How would you record this in the general ledger? Well, we need to open a general ledger account for each of these because we know that one transaction affects two different elements of the financial statements. It affects two different accounts and we need to indicate that one has increased and the other has decreased. Petrol is an expense account and we cannot group all of our expenses together because at the end of the month, the business owner, the accountants want to know how much money you spent on petrol, not on expenses in general. How much money did you spend on petrol, on staff salaries, on stationery, on bank charges, on cleaning expenses. So you want to break that up. So we will open up a petrol account. We will open up a general ledger account called petrol. You also see that we call general ledger accounts T accounts and you can see why because when we draw them up they look like little T's. Your petrol account has a debit and a credit okay and the debits and the credits always stay on the same side. Debit is always on the left hand side, a credit is always on the left hand side but our petrol account increases on the debit side because it is an expense. So 600 Rand, it is an expense, it increases on the debit side and the other side of the account is bank because we took the money out of the bank account. So within petrol, if I just look at the petrol account, what this tells me is that you spent 600 Rand on petrol and you took the money from the bank account. So anybody, any accountant or the business owner looking at this can just take a look at this and say you spent 600 Rand on petrol and you took it from the bank account. You have to show the other side of the entry as well and that means that you've got to show me the impact that this has on the bank account. So we draw up another little T account and this also has its debits and its credits. And now the question is, what side do we put this on? Well, in terms of the bank, the bank is an asset. An asset increases on the debit side and it decreases on the credit side. So what do we do with this? Well, we've taken 600 Rand out of the bank to spend on petrol, which means that the bank is decreasing and the bank decreases on the credit side. So we show it here. Now in the bank account, if I just look at the bank account in isolation, at the moment I can see that it's decreasing by 600, but I don't know why. So it makes sense then to say the other side of the entry you will find in the petrol account. Again, a business owner that's looking at this can immediately tell that you took that 600 Rand out to spend on petrol. Now if I said to you, we have another account. A few days later, another transaction, a few days later, you spent another 500 Rand on petrol. And you also took this money from the bank account. Okay. How do I deal with this? It doesn't make sense to say, okay, I'm going to start all over again and I'm going to go and create a petrol account. That doesn't make any sense because I already have a petrol account. If you did this, it would mean that the accountant or the business owner would look at this and say, how much money did I spend on petrol? And in order to tell him that, you have to go and find all the little petrol accounts that you opened. So we don't do that. If there is already an account, then you use the existing account to post that transaction into. So I already have a petrol account. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I already have a petrol account, which I'm going to use. Let me just try and get my information back. I have a petrol account that I'm going to use. It was my 500 Rand petrol. And I'm going to post it to my account. Five, 
100 Rand. Again, I took the money out of the bank account. My bank decreases on the credit side and I spent another 500 Rand on petrol. So if I look in the bank account now, I can see that there were two separate transactions for petrol and they decreased the bank account. Let's say that you spent money and you spent another 400 Rand and this money you spent on stationery and you also took the money for this out of the bank account. We now would need to open up a new account for this because we don't have one. So we would say, let's open up a stationary account. Stationary also has a debit and a credit side, little, our little T account, and you spend 400 Rand on stationary. Stationary is an expense that increases on the debit side, which means we would have 400 Rand and you'll find the other side of the transaction in the bank account. In the bank account, our bank decreases on the credit side, so we would put it in there, and we would show that you'll find the other side of the entry in stationery. Now, when you look at bank in isolation, you can start to see the value of what we're doing, because if you just have the bank account, if you're only looking at the bank account here, can you see how valuable the information is? I can immediately tell how many transactions have taken place. I can immediately tell that you had two different types or two different sets of petrol transactions on different days. I can tell you the value. I know the value that came out of that. And I can tell you exactly what you spent your money on. So you can see very clearly just how good this is in terms of breaking down our information and making sure we keep track of it. If we look at the petrol account, I can tell you exactly how much money we spent on petrol and I can tell you exactly what we spent it on. Let's assume now, and again, let's show you the value of this a little bit more. Let's assume that you spent uh, another 200 Rand on stationery. But in this case, you bought stationery on credit. So you have an account with someone and you didn't actually pay them. You said you'll pay them later. You bought that on credit. I already have a stationary account, so I can record the stationary expense. I've bought stationary, I have stationary, I just haven't paid for it yet, which means you already have the stationary. The expense itself has been incurred. So you have incurred an additional 200 Rand in stationary expense. You have spent 600 Rand on stationary, you just haven't paid for some of it yet. What happens to the other side? We can't take it to the bank because it hasn't actually come out of the bank account yet. It doesn't belong in the petrol account, which we already have. We've already said it doesn't come from the bank account. Where does it go? We create an account. We create a creditor's account. If I owe someone money, I call them creditors and we'll deal with creditors in more detail later. Creditors also have debits and credits and a creditor is a liability. It's someone I'm going to have to pay money to. A liability, does it increase on the debit side or the credit side? Liabilities increase on the credit side. So I have added a 200 Rand liability. This then shows me that this 200 Rand I'm going to have to pay later. The question is, what was it that you were spending the money on? And the answer is stationary. So I can immediately see that I owe someone and I owe them for stationary. And on this side, I'm going to put in here creditors. Now, again, you can see the value of this. If you look at the stationary account in isolation, you can immediately tell that 400 Rand of it you paid for straight away and 200 Rand of it you bought on credit. So you know how much money you spent on stationary and you know exactly whether or not you paid for it out of cash, you paid for it out of credit, you can tell immediately. These transactions are absolutely vital for you. You've got to make sure that you're comfortable. We post these items, putting the debits and the credits and deciding which side they go on. We call that posting to the general ledger. You've got to make very sure that you know which side they debit and credit on. You may have heard the term for every debit there's a credit. Don't know if you've heard of that, but it is absolutely true. We can never have a one-sided entry. There's always two sides to that. For every debit, there's a credit. You have to identify what those debits and credits are using the rules. And if there is more than one transaction going through the same account, we don't open up a new account. We use the same account. So those will be our multiple transactions. 
We don't need to worry about the balances and the totals at this point in time. We'll get to that when we look at trial balances. I just want to make sure that you are able to post transactions to the general ledger. So I've created a little example for you to make sure you can take the transactions we looked at from Tim's garden services and post them to the general ledger.